Okay. Okay, guys. Um, so I'm now about to start to demonstrate this. Are you guys ready? Is it okay for me to start? So my suggestion for you is that uh, uh, first of all, you have to have your PDF tutorial file open and uh, uh, look at both of them and um, follow along with me. That's what I'm suggesting you to do. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and then start. So the first thing that we are going to do is we are going to uh, learn how to connect to the data that you have, right? So if you open Tableau, then you have this uh, uh, initial window where you see connect. So this is the main thing that you are gonna work with. And here you have Tableau server. In other words, you can uh, bring the data from Tableau server online. If you subscribe to the service or buy the space with Tableau, then you can save all the data in Tableau uh, cloud and then those data will be saved there and you can bring uh, open it up uh, in any places, right? You can work at home or in your company or in your school and that can be done with Tableau server. Or you can open the data from your own machine, your computer, like uh, uh, you can have Excel file or text file and Java file or PDF file. The cool thing about, um, about Tableau is that you can handle PDF file. You can bring up data from PDF file and you can also work with a spatial file and statistical file as well. And uh, you can also connect your data uh, stored in microserver, Microsoft SQL Server, or MySQL Server, if you have your own server, then you can use that, or Oracle Server, SAP Server, Amazon Server, or you know any other servers that you have, you can connect uh, to those servers yourself. So um, it's uh, using uh, online spaces as your data server, and uh, that's uh, one of the advantage of using uh, Tableau Tableau, right? And uh, that, that's uh, what you can do. And here on, in the middle, you have open, right? You, if you have used your uh, data, I have created quite a lot of uh, um, data sets before. So it's all stored here and I have them here. So I, I worked on it uh, today, regional sales, so that can be open. Uh, this is nitro type performance that I am doing for fun. For fun. Uh, let me see if I can open. No, I, I'm not going to do that uh, at this moment. I would maybe I will do it next class. Uh, so, uh, so I have uh, various data set I have worked with before, and these are the examples. And discover, you know, here there are things that you can explore using a Tableau. These are right here. So now um, I'm going to open the data that I have uh, stored. So I'm gonna click on text file because it's a CSV file, right? CSV is, is a comma separated uh, version. So variables, so we are gonna use text file. That's a text file. So uh, let's click on text file and then go to downloads and uh, look, at, look for the data that you have downloaded just now from Canvas. And we have lecture zero for sample superstore.csv, right? That's the file that I'm gonna work with. So just click on that and click open. Then you should be able to open the file, right? So if you double click on that, now you have that file. And um, if you do that, now the next window comes up where you can see the preview of the data. So uh, just like Excel, we see profit ratio category, CD, country, custom, customer name, discount, and so forth. Those data is automatically recognized by Tableau and it has uh, called it up, right? 
And uh, we also see this, this, there's an icon here. This is very important for you to take a note of uh, because uh, just like any other statistical software such as SPSS as or SAS, you have to know that uh, this column is a number or text file or nominal uh, thing or dimension. Those information has to be specified. And Tableau is smart enough to pick up what the state or category of that is. So that's a good thing, but you have to verify whether that is right or not, right? And this number sign means profit ratio is a number. If you click on this downward arrow, you see uh, rename and copy values, hide, uh, calculate field, and create group and beans. Uh, so you can change things around if you want, right? So now if you click on that uh, sign itself, uh, it's a number decimal, which is quite correct, right? And if you think, oh, this is not number, it is a text file, then you can change over here to a string, right? That makes it as a, 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 a string file. And that's a mistake that I did. Um, if you have done it wrong, then here is an undo uh, button on the top left. So you can you know, bring it back. So don't panic because you have undo file. <laughs> the advantage of using a software like Tableau is there's an undo button, which will let you um, recover from a mistake or things that you did not mean to do it. So uh, you have to uh, specify as a correct type of column. So here's a ABC, there's a string file, which is good. And CD, uh, this is a string, but also it, uh, you know, understands as a, a geospatial data, meaning that uh, we're gonna use map uh, when we are creating this data. And at the time city and, and, and country, it's uh, gonna be very useful because it's a geospatial data and we are gonna uh, draw map using this. And here is a, a, a customer name that's a string file and number discount, number records, Order date, if this is number, so it's a calendar right now, right? Date. And uh, order ID, postal code is a geospatial data, so it's right there. And string data for manufacturer and product name is a string data. And then number is product profit ratio. And quantity is number data, region is string, sales is number, and all these things, right? So you have to verify everything's right. In this case, you have everything configured right, so you don't have to worry about. But if you are using your own data, you have to do that first. Okay. So then, if you have done that, now you can um, just click on this sheet, sheet one uh, that will give you, um, you know, workspace to to visualize your data. So let's click on sheet one. Okay, so we connected the data and we are on sheet one. So now let's do first visualization. So as you know, this is a sales data and we wanna understand uh, you know, how it goes with the sales data. And here are columns and rows. It's kind of a pivot table and pivot chart, which are much more powerful than pivot table and pivot chart. I'm, assuming that the Excel will come out with this kind of functionality with Excel later. But uh, at this moment, so, uh, Tableau is much ahead of Excel when it comes to visualization. And uh, uh, here's pages and filters. We can use filters just like a pivot table and marks, which gives you color, size, and text, and detail and toolkit. And that can be useful tool for us as well. And here's the space where you will see a lot of graphs that you can, you will see that um, with me right now. So the first thing that I want to do is let's uh, um, uh, take a look at the order date and drag it order date. So under tables, we have order date and drag it to columns like that, columns, right? So, and order date is uh, by year at this moment, 2015 to 2018. 
and uh, uh, this is a, a yearly sales data that I want to create. And uh, we, the moment you are creating the, or dragging that uh, variable to columns, it creates uh, variables, right? So we have 2015 to 2018. If you want to create, uh, you know, this data by product, then instead of order date, you are going to drag product. Uh, let's do it. Let's uh, try again. So uh, say, what about product category? So if you bring this product category, now instead of order year, um, you are having product categories such as furniture, suppliers, and technology, right? Or if you want to look at subcategory, more detailed uh, product names, then accessories, appliance, art, binders, bookcases. So you have uh, another variables on the top, and then you can add the sales, for example. Let's add sales to rows, right? From, so this is number, and we can use that now. And it automatically finds, you know, relevant graph, and it, it is showing that graph right here. So accessories, appliances, art, binders, and so forth. Probably this is a, you know, wholesale uh, business, and uh, they are dealing with all kinds of stuff and categories, and they are selling them. And, and here we can see um, the least sales is fasteners, right? So fasteners, not much sales. However, the high sales, um, you can see chairs and uh, phones. Phones, you know, have, it has, uh, um, the category has higher sales than, than chairs that we can see. And you can just take it out and bring um, uh, order date again. Then now you see 2015 to 2018, you see the trend of the order date right away, right? So that's a, a, an easy way of visualizing the data. And we want to make it a little bit more useful for us to analyze the data. So um, we're gonna look at now category as well. So we have 2015 to 2018, and we also want to add some complexity to the graph. So let's add a category on the top of your table, under your table, and I'm gonna add it to columns. Then now, you know, it not only gives you the year from 2015 to 2018, but also the category. There are three categories, furniture group, an office supplies group, and technology group. So there are three groups, and these are added to your uh, graph, right? So you see uh, more uh, you know, variety here. And we see that uh, the general trend is that uh, if we run regression on here, then we will see that the sales has been increasing from furniture to technology over time, right? So that we can see generally increasing trend, we see that. And now, you know, we want to um, add more complexity to this. And uh, I want to you know, make more categories to, so not only furniture, but which furniture is selling better, right? So I see the office supplies was not selling very well in 2016. The same with the 2017. And uh, uh, however, in 2018, office supplies increased. Uh, furniture, so its uh, sales was not as much increased uh, from 2017. So I will look at which product is selling better than the others. So in that case, you can add subcategory to columns, and then that will give you more detailed um, a graph, right? So now you see that the chairs are selling very well and furniture and chairs, among furniture, chairs are the top sellers, right? Top sellers. However, what happened in 2018? Yeah, still chairs are the top sellers on the furniture group and uh, furnishings are least selling group of furnitures product. So you can tell what is happening with your data in more details there.
So now, you know, we want to do more analysis here with this uh, uh, data and it's kind of too, too much, right? There are too much, too many uh, categories and it's hard to understand what is happening with this graph. So what you can do here is there's a function called filters, right? Here is filter and I'm going to drag subcategory to filters, right? And then it says, yeah, you have a lot of uh, category, a lot of products from accessories to tables and which one do you want to choose at this moment? So you can, you know, say none or all or none and then you can choose only chairs and envelopes, right? Or you can just click on all of them at this point and click on okay. And then it showed up on filters. And here you can say, uh, there's a downward arrow, click on that and show filter. If you show filter, what happens is that here on your right screens, um, on the right top, you have subcategory and this uh, card appeared where you can choose which one you're gonna display. For example, you know, I'm interested in the trend of sales of chairs. So I unselected everything and then select chairs only, then I see that chairs has been, chair has, chairs have been selling quite well from 2015. 2016 was a bad year for chairs. However, uh, it was pretty good afterward. And- Why do you show the filter list again? Yeah, you drag it. So let me undo. Okay, so here I'm gonna drag subcategory to filters. Right, and it shows everything and click on OK. And then download the arrow right here, click on it and show filter. Then uh, thank you. you see the cards over there. And I'm choosing only chairs because uh, I wanna see the general trend of sales of chairs. Or, you know, what about um, phones, right? Phones, it's similar. I think in 2018, there was a, a lot more sales for phones. What about tables? Tables, right. So tables in 2017, very good sales. However, 2018, there was not much uh, uh, increase in sales, right, that we can see. So although it's kind of uh, uh, quite uh, complex and complicated, you can make it simpler if you are using the subcategory and choosing one of them only, then they will make it look nicer and, and easier for you to understand. What about appliances? Appliances, right? Appliances has been increasing in sales and there's a leap of jump, uh, leap of sales in from 2017 to 2018. So you can just you know, do one by one, right? You can just analyze one by one, and then see you know, if there is any anything noticeable, right? Art, right? So from 2015 to 2017, the sales was uh, steady and even decreasing in 2017. However, we see a uh, huge increase in 2018. Very good. So that's uh, something that we have to focus on. We, maybe we can do more sales. Somehow people are more interested in sales in, in that year. Uh, in, interest in art. What about uh, copiers? Copiers has been steadily, actually drastically increasing from 10,000 to 60,000. So that's a very good sign. And envelopes and fasteners. Fasteners, it's a uh, demand has decreased. Furnishings, it's been increasing. We know that uh, furnishings uh, were not much in sales, however, the demand is increasing, right? Labels, it has increased very good. Machines, oh, machines, look at machines. 2015, there were a lot of sales. You know, it was uh, one of very well-selling products, but now 16 has seen a huge drop in 17 and 18, again, it's dropping. So it's, it's disappointing. I'm not so sure what's going on with this product, maybe more drilling or investigation is needed. Paper, right? Paper is increasing, the demand is increasing. Phones, increasing. 
storage increasing, supplies. Hmm. What happened in 2016? Other than, I don't know, but uh, 17 and 18, we backed up. And, yeah, so, so these are uh, the, the, the things that we can do, uh, you know, by just having subcategories and visually analyze what happened. And, and if you want, you can you know, compare two products. For example, we saw um, fasteners and then what about machines? Let's compare. So fasteners, it's a, uh, just a little sales, but the machine, machines was, the sales was in big figure, 60 to something. So you can compare them or you can compare uh, more significant ones such as uh, copiers and machines and you can compare them together, right? And and uh, we, we can do the same thing for year. So let's uh, um, go to order date. I'm gonna drag it to filters again. And then I'm gonna choose years only. Right now, what I need is years. So display years and all of them I need. And then I'm gonna display it. So show filter and you have year over there. So year, so if you wanna look at only 2015 for the data, then you can collect that. And you can compare 2015 and 18, and you can choose that two years and you can see what happened, right? So machines, um, copier, the sales in 2015 was not much, but now in 2018, there were a lot more sales for copiers. And machines, a lot of sales in 2015, but it decreased in 2018. So that contrast you can see in this analysis. So uh, by having these two filters displayed and manipulating and selecting the right one, you can uh, choose different. So, uh, right now, what we want to do is we want to choose only three things. What are those three products? Let, at this point, let's add everything. So I'm gonna add everything. So it's fair. And then I'm gonna now add the colors. So it's all blue. It's kind of difficult to distinguish one product from each other. So I wanna add color to this graph. So how do I do that? First of all, I want to, I am interested if there, you know, a sales amount is a good thing. However, more important thing is probably profit, right? How much profit am I making? It might be more useful information for me. So I want to add profit to this graph. And that can be accomplished by adding this profit to color marks here. So there are many marks, five types of marks. And I'm gonna just drop it onto color square here. So then, the moment I release it or drop it onto color, what happens is that it gives you color automatically. And there's a legend here, some profit and uh, orange color, the darker it is, the more uh, uh, loss you had, but the bluer it is, it's uh, uh, the more profit you got from the sales. So now we have more idea about not only the sales amount, but also the profit amount, right? So this is something that Excel cannot handle. Excel or spreadsheet modeling cannot handle, but Tableau nicely enables us to, you know, just color code everything and understand things visually, right? So it's a very cool thing for us to use. So look at uh, bookcase, um, you know, bookcase sales was pretty good and tables were pretty good, however, um, you had a uh, loss by selling 
tables a lot, you have a, a negative. So $3,129 of, of uh, loss you had before. However, this product um, chairs, right? It brings lots of uh, profit to your business. So I think your Salesforce must focus on chairs more than tables or bookcases, right? So chairs and furnishings are the ones that you wanna go for. And we see under technology uh, uh, category, we see that, uh, oh, it's not technology. I'm sorry, this machines, right? Machine, uh, not much profit. You made a lot of sales. We thought, wow, it was good to make a lot of sales for machines. However, only $370 of sales in 2015. Uh-oh, what am I doing, right? You are just doing busy work, not making much money. So, so that's concerning, right? And you may want to investigate what happened with this product. Uh, however, in contrast, you see phones, you made lots of profit for that uh, product, phones, right? So that's a good thing. And uh, uh, you're pleased to know about that. And if you scroll to your right, maybe let's take a look at the most recent data, 2018, and tables are concerning. You know, that creates $8,144 um, of loss. So that's uh, uh, disappointing to, to hear that. And uh, what, what's wrong with this product, right? You want to investigate more with this product. In, in contrast, chairs were very good. It created a, a, a profit. And even better is copiers. Look at this copiers in 2018, $25,000 of profit you made, right? So that's very good. So, you know, you, you see, oh, I just want to focus on copiers and, and tables, how about that? So I'm gonna uncheck all of them and then tables and copiers and I wanna see what's happening with it, right? So you see tables from 2015 to 2018, constantly negative. And, um, you know, you, you have to do something about that, right? So you see that uh, um, you are losing money the more you sell uh, your, your tables, the more money you are losing. So that's what we see. But in contrast, uh, this copiers, the more you sell, the bluer it is, right? So the, the color becomes darker than before. So, wow, this is a definitely cash cow. So you want to focus on copiers rather than other things such as, such as uh, uh, chip, uh, tables. So you can, the simple analysis visually quite quickly using this function. Any questions so far? So now um, let's uh, choose or select bookcases and machines and tables only. So I'm gonna I'm gonna uncheck copiers, the bookcases, machines, and tables. Okay, so these are the products that give you headaches and, and you want to figure out what's happening with this. And you find this distribution. So machines were pretty good in 2015 and 2016 and 17. Uh, however, after 2018, somehow machines became uh, uh, on red, right? Red, red uh, on your balance sheet. So what, what's happening with, with these uh, machines that you want to figure out? And the same with the tables. What about uh, bookcases? Bookcase is constantly giving you negative um, from 2015 to 2018. So you, you can now investigate more than before. So that's something that you want to do. Now for um, this, just select everything. And we are going to just bring back. And one more thing that I want to do here is that I want to now add um, region, region to rows so that uh, 
I can see the differences across the regions. So go to tables, on the tables, you will find region right here, and then add it to rows. Right, so the moment you do that, now on your row, you have central, east, south, and west region. So they divided the United States into four regions, central, east, south, and west. And we see how the sales pattern are different from each other, right? So for example, central and east in 2015, the furniture was somehow on the negative, the south and west, they were making money. So what, what is that? Why is that the case? Probably, you know, if you are a manager, you can ask, oh yeah, we might have given too much discount in central or east, and you can investigate the reason why, right? So that's something that you can do. The same with office supplies in 2015, binders was negative in the central region. And why is that the case? You can, because the other three regions, they are not on the negative side, right? Why is that that you can investigate? And then technology, central region is on the negative, south region is also in the negative, especially in machines. And why is that? You, you can um, you can investigate that, find the region out. And in 2016, the same thing here, uh, furniture um, bookcases was on the negative and only um, furnishings the central region. Right? So you can just uh, look and examine what's happening with your sales trend. And somehow I think central region, Eastern region can be problematic because we see a lot on red, right? So they are not doing things very well. I don't see as many blue ones. In South region, right? The, the, the height of sales is low and then it's all, you know, uh, light blue or negatives, right? So, that you may want to investigate too. Very good. And now I want to um, choose machine only. So let's see what happened to machines. And I see that in the South, there's a big loss for, for machines. And in central region, um, also again, it was all in the, in the loss. And uh, south region, again, in 2018, was a big loss, right? $3,900, $3,254. So these were my main regions why they are on the negative side. And central region had the same thing, and east region in 2017. So you see various uh, places. Uh, for the reason for the reason why uh, there was negative on the machines. So you can do a similar analysis for any other product yourself too. Okay, now save this one. Um, so I'm gonna go to sheet one and then rename. Just like Excel, you can name it. Here, sales by product slash region. So sales by product slash region. So doing so, you have now uh, created one, uh, one facet of analysis. And you have looked at uh, the sales of machines by region. And that is clearly shown here. And then I'm going to create, actually duplicate the same worksheet so right click on the sales by product and vision. And then you can say, you can click on duplicate and that will create another worksheet that includes the same thing that you have done. And we are gonna manipulate further. Okay, and then you can name this one um, as sales in the South. I wanna focus on South sales. So let's go there and sales in the South. sales in the south that you have created. And let's see how sales has been 
dispersed throughout the south southern states. So um, I want to drag a region to filters. So let's go region here and drag it to filters like that. And I want to include only south and exclude the other region, central, east, and west. By unchecking, we can do that. And then here is the regional sales in the south. So machines, um, so all machines, and we see uh, the trend over here. The sales is in ov overall decreasing. In 2015, for some reason, there were a lot of sales. However, that sales was not helpful for the financial balance of your company because it's in the, in the negative. In 2017, the sales was pretty good and it was very positive and you made money. However, in 2018, back to, back to negative side of your balance sheet. So that you can see here more clearly. Now, if you include um, all of them, it'll look like this, right? So it comes back in the Southern region, what kind of sales were happening that you can see over there. It's, or you can you know, selectively choose only the same thing that we have chosen before. Um, machines. Machines and chairs and tables, chairs and tables. That can be seen here too. Okay, so by this time, I, I would encourage you to save the file so that you don't lose it. So go to file and save or save as, right? You can save as and go here, right? Regional sales and profits. And I'm gonna say demonstration. So regional sales and profits so that uh, you don't lose this file by accident. Regional sales and profits demonstration. And we'll save it so that I can locate it later. Um, if, even though something happens to my computer. Any questions so far? Okay. Um, now I'm going to create a new worksheet. So, because I want to create a map and uh, you know display my sales on the map. So what you can do is just click on this worksheet, click on it, then you automatically create it, and you want to um, name it, maybe sales by state. So let's see. Meaning sales. sales map. And then what I want to do is actually, if you come to on your left pane, you see um, this uh, uh, earth sign, and these are geospatial data. And uh, Tableau is capable of recognizing geospatial data and visualize it on the map right away. So um, what I suggest you to do is just double click on state. So double click on it. And that has brought up the map of the United States and the state itself, right? So longitude and latitude, um, the data was brought up and you can see the map and the location of the things right here. So it's a very cool thing that other software cannot handle and uh, Tableau is advantageous in this sense because we can visualize things on the map right away. And 
uh, I want to um, now, um, now bring sales data. So So let's first bring up region data because we want to focus on south only. So region to filter right here, filters. And then I'm gonna choose only south only uh, because we are now focusing on south, right? So the moment you choose south only, what happens is that it just looks at the southern state data, right? So it zoomed up so that you can focus on that data. And then I want to add the color, uh, the sales to color. So, you know, drag sales and, and over color on the marks and drop it there. And that is going to create a new uh, color. And uh, it shows which state had uh, the most sales. And the lighter it is, let the less sales you have the darker it is, the more sales you have, right? So you have now Florida, $89,479 of sales. That's the darkest and highest sales you can see. The next one is Virginia, right? 70,000. And then North Carolina, 55,604. And then Georgia and Kentucky and uh, Tennessee, right? And Alabama and Arkansas, Mississippi, and so forth, right? So by color, you can tell um, what kind of sales they had, right? So um, sometimes, you know, if it is all blue, it's kind of difficult for you to see. So you want to split it by half. So which is average? Average might be in the middle, and then those who are in the below average sales, then you might, uh, say it's red or orange, or if it is uh, above the average, it's a uh, darker blue or something like that. So that can be accomplished by color. So click on color, and then you see color, edit, and uh, edit colors, click on that. And right now palette is automatic, but you can choose orange, blue diversion, right? So um, the average will be the neutral color and uh, the lower it is, it's gonna be the uh, darker orange it is, right? So that will happen. And then here, if you want, you can choose what the value it will be, but, or you can reverse the color, right? So uh, that can be done or, um, or step color, you can use that, right? Or you can go to advanced and start at say, you know, uh, zero right? and then end at 100,000, right? You can do that. And the center will be, you can say um, you know, 50,000. You can just manipulate yourself and change the color scheme and then display it right here, right? So now, you know, your aim, your goal for each state sales is $500,000, half a million dollars. And you see that uh, Florida and Virginia and North Carolina was able to, they, the states were, the stores in those states were able to achieve your goal. However, Alabama and Mississippi, Louisiana, and they are far from your goal, right? Although they are in the, you know, a good sales amount, but uh, they are far from your goal, right? They can, indicated right here. So, so, you know, you can use a very good color scheme to visually tell what is happening with your state sales data. Okay, now, uh, instead of sales, I want to use um, profit. So I'm going to just drag some of sales back to the data pane like this. And that way I can just um, get rid of it. And then instead, I'm going to put sales 
I'm sorry, profit on color like that, right? So now um, you can see, you know, some states had a negative profit and, and it's really surprising because Florida was the number one state in terms of sales amount. But now we see that, oh no, it's uh, under, uh, under uh, red, red zone, orange zone, which means that you are not making much money. You have made a lot of sales. However, actually you're, you're bleeding because of Florida. And the same with North Carolina and Tennessee. Virginia, uh, I think it's a good state because the sales was on top of the others. However, um, uh, it's making money. The profit is quite high, strong. So it's a good sign. However, North Carolina and Florida, in fact, they were in the red zone, which is really not good for your company. And you have to investigate what, what's happening with Florida and North Carolina. Although they are making good amount of sales, why are they losing money, right? So, so that has to be investigated. And if you want to make the color scheme clearer, as I did before, you can go to automatic and then uh, orange, blue, diverging or red, clean diversion, and then go to advanced, right? And then start from say um, there and end there and center is zero like that. And you click on okay. And then we see uh, more clearly, you know, blue zone, I'm sorry, green zone and red zone, we can see that right here. So that can be done as well. So we can see that the color scheme can be a very powerful tool for Tableau for us to um, you know, impart this information to the readers, right? So managers, managers oh, wow. So you can, um, you, know, you can compare them side by side, uh, sales and, uh, and uh, um, this is not sales map. I have to change it to profit map. So profit map. Right. Profit map is right here. And uh, we know that uh, Florida and North Carolina is not, not doing very well. And we can present sales map here too, right? Let's, let's do the same thing. So state, double click on it. And uh, uh, region to filters and click on South only. And you're focusing on that. And then you're going to drag sales to your color, right? And then you want to change the color scheme to orange, blue, and advanced. Start, say, at zero and end 100,000. Was it 100,000? Oops. And at 100,000, and start at zero. And center has to be 50,000. Click OK. And we have a sales map here. So um, we see Virginia, North Carolina, and Florida. In this case, Florida and Virginia are pretty strong states in terms of sales. However, if you look at, so this is a series map. So I'm going to change that. Series map. However, if you look at profit, you know, you know um, these states are actually not helping you to make profits, which is a surprising findings, right? So, so that's uh, what we can see here in this map. Now we are on step five on page page 27. Drill down into the details. Um, so I want to um, you know copy this profit map. So I will copy profit map. 
and duplicate. And then I have to name, name it as negative profit bar chart. Negative profit bar chart, right? Negative profit bar chart. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change this map into a completely different one. And there's an easy way to do that. What is it? Um, on your top right, you see show me, right? Here's a show me button. Click on it and it drops down lots of uh, graphs type that you can choose. And now I wanna choose this bar graph, right? horizontal bar graph. And that chooses the graph right away, right? And, or you can choose a you know, pie chart or this or that. So you can just uh, choose whatever you like at this moment and see what are available for you. Right? This is cool, right? This is um, a bubble chart and we see Virginia is uh, on the red and Georgia is on the red and the Mississippi is on the red. Where, where did Florida go? I don't see Florida here. Alabama and Kentucky and all that. So let's see where Florida is. So state, show filter, show me. Florida is here, but somehow we can have a field. So let's choose the south, only Florida, Georgia. Oh, Georgia and Florida, they were overlapped. Louisiana. North Carolina, South Carolina. What about Alabama? Virginia? Virginia. So you can manually, you can choose the states yourself. Let's see, include the Texas, Tennessee. Oh, I don't see them here somewhere. Anyway. So you can manually select the state yourself. If you don't like it, then you have to go back as much as you can. And the original graph that we wanted was this one. So go back to the negative property bar chart because this is where we are going to work on and follow the direction. So you can manipulate yourself later. But uh, at this moment, let's come back to this. One of the cool thing that I want to um, talk about here is that uh, Tableau is quite in interactive and uh, you can choose, uh, or you can interact with the graph yourself. Okay? So for example, oh yeah, I wanna choose this negative profit bar chart and look at Florida and North Carolina and Tennessee only, right? So then you can just, you know, Select them with your mouse, right? So select this three bar graph, and then it's going to be selected. And then the moment you release your mouse button, then what happens is it brings up this keep only, exclude, and this attach and other options right here. And you can choose keep only, and that will just include that uh, states, right? The data from the states only. Again. You, know, you come back here, select with your mouse with a state that you want to work with, and then keep only that will 
leave this three states only. Right? So this is another powerful tool that you can use for Tableau to work with uh, your, your, your visualization to just you know, select the thing that you want to work with. So this interactivity is uh, another um, you know, value that you can take advantage of while using uh, soft Tableau. Okay, so you have only this thing, and which is good. Here's a little bit tricky part of using top and filter. I'm on page 31. Uh, create a top end filter. So uh, from the data pane, you can drag CD to filter shelf. So here we have CD here and then drag it over to filters like that. And then here you can uh, choose by field. Here's the top, here's a general wild card condition and top N. So again, general wild card condition and top, right? And I'm gonna use it by, by field. And I want to um, filter it by bottom, bottom five, right? So it's the city that has lowest profit margin so that's what it means. So bottom five and profit. And that I want to do. And somehow it does not um, execute it very well because it's uh, not high priority and you have a uh, conflict in uh, sorting filters together for the region south and state and city. So if you follow this order, it does not really um, create that. So you, put it up there and then uh, state becomes a context, add to context. Then now you see that uh, Florida, North Carolina and Tennessee over there. Right? So add to context. So you, you just uh, put, uh, sometimes when you have uh, conflicting priorities against each other when you are using filters, then you have to adjust the priorities and understand which one is the context that you are gonna be using. Okay. So this part it can be confusing to you guys, so I'm going to just skip. So now I'm going to add subcategory to rows. So I'm going to add the subcategory to rows right here. And, and uh, I'm going to drag profit to color so that I can make it more colorful. And it's pretty um, obvious, which is producing profit and which is not. And now I was also want to add year to this data. So order date will be um, selected and we want to add it as a filter. Right? So order date, Go to filter. Now I'm going to use years only and select them all 
click on OK. And I'm going to show this one, so show filter. And you can just take a look at you know, one or the other. So say 2015 only and 2018, they can be compared with each other, against each other. Okay, so now let's go back to profit map that we had before. So here we're gonna do something. Um, we want to display subcategory as a filter and then um, choose everything. Okay, and then you can also show it show right here that can be done. And instead of uh, profit, I want, what I want to do is I want to display what, how much profit and profit ratio we have. So I'm gonna display it on the map. So it's kind of, you know, I want to just see it right away instead of hovering over all these states. So now we are gonna learn label. So profit to label then you will display the profit that you had. So uh, North Carolina is on negative, negative 7,495, and Florida negative $3,412. What's the profit ratio? We can display right under the profit. So we see that uh, Georgia was pretty good, $16,000 of profit, and the ratio is 63%, very good. And Virginia, 74% of the profit mark, mark ratio. Uh, however, Florida, 6.7% of profit ratio, negative, and uh, North Carolina, uh, 2.05. It's on positive side. Interesting. But how come it's on the negative in terms of profit? That's interesting. And that's what we see in this map here. So you can display. Uh, the, the amount of, of the profit or you know, no profit, those can be done right here too. And now order date, we can also uh, add it right here. So order date, let's go to filter again and years, you know, choose years and all years. And I want to show it as a filter. So I click show filter. Now we can see, see them and we can choose again 2015 only. So in 2015, you know, only Florida and North Carolina and tennis was pretty good at the time. And 2016, uh, they are not good. 2017, not much um, uh, you know, negatives. So that's a Good thing in 2017, what about 2018? Florida turned around in 2018, right? So we cannot just judge the, the performance of the state by only uh, one year. But if you look at you know, the trend, we see that uh, 2018 was good for Florida, but not for Tennessee and uh, North Carolina that we can see here. Right? So you know, by breaking them down by year, you can tell more information. Um, yeah, and you, know, you can also include only a few things. For example, um, if you look at those tables, right? In 2018, there is on the negative side. So by product category is also different. In 2017, it was pretty good. 2016, 2015. So all these things can be done. Right. right? So I'm going to also select all the products. And so this is quite useful for you to keep on analyzing. 
for yourself. Okay, now I am on um, page 39, building a dashboard. Okay, so now, you know, this analysis have given us a lot of insights about uh, the sales trend and sales graph and what products are giving us trouble, what states are doing better than the others. All those things were um, done right and it gave us very thorough analysis. And what I like to do is I want to put only relevant and impo important information on a dashboard and uh, uh, publish it and report it to, to my manager or share it with my colleague or my you know, customers or stakeholders. That's uh, a beauty of using Tabula. And to do that, you can create a dashboard. So let us build a dashboard to show these insights uh, to or share the insights with others. So the first thing that I want to do is that now we have been working with this only worksheet, right? But now on, on your right, uh, there is a you know, dashboard. This uh, sign is dashboard sign and I want to add it right here. So click on that and you see this is a dashboard. And I, I want to name it as, uh, say, sales snapshot about that. Right? I want to name it as a sales snapshot, and I want to uh, do this. Here. And um, you can now, you know, uh, drag, drag your um, your worksheet to your dashboard. For example, sales in the South, I want to drag this one. Sorry, quick question. Uh -huh. um, where did you get the, um, to the, uh, what's it called? The dashboard page from? Okay, so look at here, do you see my screen? So if this is when you are, this, you are gonna use this icon, you are gonna use work to create a worksheet, but this one is dashboard sheet. So you want to click on this one, then new dashboard will be created there. Yeah, I can't see that on the bottom. Shabi, you cannot see my, my screen? I can't see that on the bottom of the screen, no. What about now? You see new dashboard, why you don't you? So the, the, the icon uh, in the center or uh, the second item from the right. It, it looks like a, a window. Oh yeah, okay, I see. Yeah, click on, did you create it? Mm -hmm. Very good. So I wanna drag sales, you have sheets, we have created five sheets so far, and I'm gonna drag sales in the south to my um, dashboard like this. So I have them right there, right? So, and I wanna also drag profit map that I created here, profit map. So profit map here, I'm gonna drag it to this side. So I put um, sales in the south on the left and profit map on the right. Side by side, I can see them together, right? Very good. Or what you can do is you can bring this one to the bottom. Maybe you can move it and put it. Can I do it? Yeah. Bottom. Right. So, so then we see, and then you can adjust the adjust the size of the pen pane window like that, and that you can do. Right. So, uh, you can adjust it as you want. And this might be another view that you can try. Okay. So now you can see the graph and subcategory all together. You can change things around. And since this is here, you can bring it over here.
Good. And profit margin is good. Ear is good. So let's see what happened with ear. So we can bring it over here again. So ear all together. So you can choose from the 2015 for that. You can adjust the size. And it's been 17 in 2018 and 2016. All of them can be seen here, right? And you can choose copiers and furnishings. You know, however you want, you can choose and display yourself. So in this way, you're clear about that. The same here, you can you know, enlarge it if you want, or zoom out, or you can choose only 2017 and only choose chairs that you can do. So, so um, you now have created an interactive uh, dashboard that you can investigate. You can you know, investigate uh, how things are going on with your data right now. And uh, uh, that will uh, be very fascinating. So if you look at New York Times or other um, other newspapers, they create dashboard on their um, a website and you can just click and change things around. And that's what you have done just now. So, so this is how they create things. Of course, they, some programming are involved to make it more, look more nicer, uh, nicer than the others. Uh, but uh, basically this is the concept that they are using. Okay, so we were here before. And so for example, it's uh, too busy and I want to make it look simpler. So what I want to do is I want, to, first of all, these are redundant. So I want to get rid of them. So I say uh, this, I don't need this and that I don't need this. And uh, I need to have more space and order date um, and also uh, this category I can get rid of. And you can do that by, you know, going here and right click and you can show a uh, header or uh, don't show header that you can do that. But uh, in this case, you need a header. So if there's any header that uh, you don't want to show, then you can just get rid of that by right clicking and then show header this check mark if you check it again then it will be done so that can be done now this uh, filters are very important for you to make it interactive so what i'm going to do is i'm going to make this one as floating so if you click on that uh, bar and uh, scroll down and there's a floating and then i'm going to uh, click on that option and bring it to a uh, space that are not used and then this is going to be a legend that I'm going to be using here. And it's nice uh, to use uh, unusual space over here. And the same here, uh, here, and I'm going to make it floating too. So over here and drag it over here. And you can just click on that and maybe change as you want. However, you can make it look uh, simpler Supposing a single value slider so that uh, you don't have to check on it, but just you know, slide to 2015, 16, 17, 18, that can be done. Or you can just put it in this uh, arrow that will change things a lot. So that's another thing that you can do. And uh, of course, here, if you can choose that, you know, that will change things right here. Now, another thing that you can do is here is a, a use as filter and click on that. And then what it, what it does is that it, by uh, clicking on that, this uh, graph map is connected to your order data subcategory sub and it will serve as a filter. So the moment you choose that, uh, that will change uh, the values for the order data and subcategory as well. So it's uh, quite interactive, just like you see in New York Times or other uh, uh, newspapers like that. If you want to go back to uh, the previous thing, then you can just click on the area where there's no south area, right? Southern states. 
And by doing so, you can move around and make it interactive. So when you are doing your homework, now let's go to uh, the homework that I gave you. So it is. Yeah, so I'm gonna to go to um, assignment and assignment four due next week is this. And basically I want you to do what we have been doing. The first thing that you want to do is uh, come up with questions that you want to investigate. Um, one group asked about deep discount and profit ratio, how they are related to each other. So that's a very good question. And you can ask other questions yourself. So as a team, you can brainstorm and come up with interesting questions, intriguing questions. So ask as many questions as possible and uh, write all them down, right? So brainstorming all those questions. And then you are discussing with your teammates and uh, choosing the questions that you wanna ask, right? So please, go through this brainstorming uh, stage together as a team. And then uh, I want you to come down to a few important questions that you wanna investigate. And then uh, I also want you to merge the data with another data set. So if you merge the data set with one data set, that's gonna be three points, uh, two more, more than two data, then it's gonna be full credits. So we saw the region, the state, the city, um, uh, the time, right? So uh, February data or uh, mon uh, not Monday, but the January data, September data. So you can use various columns as a basis to connect the data and clean the data all together. You can use um, Open Refine or Excel to clean the data. And then after that, you want to now um, answer the data yourself. Using, uh, using the data set. So, so you ask the questions, so you just uh, ask your, your answers to the questions yourself. For example, is there a deep dis uh, correlation between deep discount and the profit? And your answer probably will be uh, yes, there is a negative correlation because as you give deep discount, you know, your profit margin will suffer from it, right? So. So that's your reason and your answer you give that. And then I want you to go to uh, cargo.it. Uh, there you can make a, a, a mind map where you ask questions and put down your answers to that, right? It's important for you to do this before analyzing and visualizing the data, right? And then now if you have done that, you upload the data and do the analysis together, right? So just as we have done today, you make a worksheet one to three, one to five, one to 10, however many you want, you make it and then make a nice dashboard. And then uh, you want to publish it. Uh, I'm not certain at this point you will receive uh, the, the information uh, that is needed to publish the data. If you and I will make sure that I will send that information to you this by this week, this uh, Thursday probably. Uh, but uh, try if you authenticated your uh, Tableau using the product key that I gave you, you should be able to, but uh, I will make sure that that is working. Uh, so you can publish it and then uh, you can just simply submit that uh, website uh, address on the PowerPoint so that I can check it. Uh, how you have made it interactive and visually appealing. And uh, for final product, you have to uh, submit your PowerPoint slides, uh, which include the screenshot and web address of the mind map, and also the web address of the dashboard and uh, 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 screenshots of that, and then uh, answers to your questions and answers and uh, rationals and interpretations. Those things you can include your in your PowerPoint. And here's the rubric. Uh, I want you to ask insightful questions which are dealing with the why and how questions and uh, data merge. Uh, one data set, three points, three data, uh, two data sets, five points. 
uh, the visual analysis five points and dashboard interactivity is important here and that's 10 points insights and implications and visually captivating that's five points so that's how you are going to work with your um, team members to do this okay thank you for um, your participation today i'm going to be sticking around if you have any question let me know otherwise i will see you next week thank you Good question for you, Professor. So for this assignment, we're doing, um, we're using the same data that we used for class today. Yes. And then we're just merging data to it. Right. Very good, Shady. That's a correct understanding. Okay, thank you. Have a good weekend. Or you good too. Weekend. Take care, Professor. You too.